On behalf of the University of Strathclyde, I welcome you to today's congregation for the conferment of degrees. You're sitting in the Barony Hall, and although we've invested more than a billion pounds in our campus over the last 12 years, this is one of my favourite buildings. It's got wonderful stained glass windows, as you'll see, and we've got the UK's only Bach style organ. And it really is truly stupendous when you listen to the music that's, that's been played. It's an exceptionally special day. It's special for you, our graduates. You've studied during what is probably the most disruptive and challenging period that any students have faced over in living history. You've struggled, you've, you've really worked through your, your studies, you've tried to learn in a different way. And it's been difficult, and I know it's been difficult, but that challenge, that difficulty has made you stronger. And you have defeated those, all those challenges. You have succeeded. And you're here today, despite everything that's happened, and you should be very proud of what you've achieved. But it's also an incredibly special day for your parents, for those who have been close to you during this time period, your supporters, your family, they've been with you every step of the way. They've found it difficult when you found it difficult. They've been challenged when you've been challenged. And I can tell you, it's, you know, for the parents and the family who are here, this is almost like a wedding. You will never forget this day. That's how special it is. And I'm, it's special for me as well because my daughter is also graduating today. Uh, and through the business school and the university. So I know how the parents feel. I know how difficult it's been. But it's also a special day for our staff. Our staff had to respond very quickly to the pandemic, the lockdown. Had to change the way in which they taught. They had to change their learning methods. And this was done over a period of about two weeks. It was exceptionally challenging for them. But they got through it. And they're here today to celebrate your success. And so we're all here in a, what is say is a very special day. But today is even more special because today we have an honorary graduate, Dr. James Hay, who's here. And you'll hear a little bit more about him. And we've also got the honor and the privilege to have our principal and vice chancellor, Professor Sir James MacDonald, in uh, attending as well. So it's, it's a really, good, special event. And I want us to think about that. You know, when your loved one is coming up, and it'll just be in a few minutes that they'll be coming up onto the, the stage. And it's a, a symbolic walk. It's the closing of one part of their life and the beginning of a new part of a life. From moving from being a student and a graduand to being a graduate and an alumna or an alumnus of the university and joining more than 191,000 people who call themselves Strathclyde graduates around the world. So without further ado, I now declare today's congregation for the conferment of degrees open, and I invite Professor Billy Kerr, who's the Deputy Associate Principal of the University, to present our honorary graduate. Principal and Vice-Chancellor, I have the honour to present to you Dr James Muir Hay. Jim Hay, as he is known to his many colleagues and friends, is a businessman and entrepreneur of international standing with a track record of success spanning a career in both the industrial and commercial sectors. Jim is the former CEO and current chairman of the Dubai-based GMH International Group, which is a privately owned family-run business operating primarily in the construction industry. To reach his present position as a world-class business leader, a journey was required, and as may be recognized by many of today's graduands, Jim's pathway was founded on family and friends who recognized the power of education, particularly his father, William Hay, who was in fact a Strathclyde Royal College of Science and, and, Science and Technology graduate in metallurgy. Relating to the early parts of his life, 
Jim experienced what he describes as a traditional Scottish upbringing in Caldercrooks, a semi-rural village in North Lanarkshire close to the town of Airdrie. Jim attended Glengowan Primary School and then went on to Airdrie Academy. At this time, Jim had a keen interest in chemical engineering and it was the University of Strathclyde's offering of a joint BSc degree in chemistry and applied chemistry that provided the specific and intensive training coverage that he desired. Indeed, Jim has stated that Strathclyde's core values and mission of impactful learning coupled with the integral links to industrial application aligned directly with his plans for his further education. Initiating his studies at Strathclyde in 1968, Jim had a very successful undergraduate period, showing a particularly strong talent in mathematics, so much so that he was actively poached by a mathematics professor to jump ship to a degree in the maths department. Jim politely declined, but he did prominently take these skills on to PhD research in a program where he studied the kinetics of polymerization processes under the supervision of Dr. Ivor Bengoff, again within the Department of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Jim has extremely fond memories of his time as a PhD student at Strathclyde and has stated that everything he learned here he has applied successfully to both the technical and corporate components of his career and business life. In particular, Jim is a strong advocate that the cycle of setting objectives, analysing data and continuously questioning the science has just as much relevance within the business sector as it does in the science and technology industries. With PhD studies complete, in 1975, Jim took on a job at BP as an engineer. Right at the outset, Jim showed a desire to travel, and BP agreed to send him across to the Far East, that is, to Grangemouth. From a, from a very early stage within his career at BP, Jim was identified for inclusion within the highly notable BP Individual Development Programme for elite talent within the company. Importantly, this did provide Jim with the opportunities to travel where he engaged in key BP initiatives throughout the UK and internationally, including eight years in Southeast Asia, based in Jakarta, Indonesia. As a skilled leader, he escalated through the company to become a member of the BP senior executive team, with his roles evolving from being technically aligned towards project and business management, corporate planning, and into finance-based remits, such as mergers and acquisitions. As a mark of his business-aligned agility and broad skill, it is worth noting that in his 27-year career at BP, Jim had adopted 13 individual job roles. In 2002, Jim's entrepreneurial drive and dexterity, alongside his keen eye for business opportunity, led him to leave BP and onto a new venture with the founding of the JMH International Group as a vehicle for acquiring Fosrock, at the time a BP-owned manufacturing company. Fosrock provides chemistry-based products and services to the construction industry, and Jim saw significant promise and growth potential in this company. Fosrock became the foundation of the GMH Group, with Jim using his business skill and prior experience to run this technically-based company to an exceptional level of international success. Indeed, within the global construction industry, the level of recognition now associated with the Fosrock logo is believed to be equivalent to that of Coca-Cola. The highlight of Fosrock's technological solutions include concrete admixtures, waterproofing membranes, industrial flooring, and silicon sealants, all of which have made an immense international impact in a, sp a spectrum of construction environments. Notable examples include the Holy Mosque project in Saudi Arabia, which constitutes the largest expansion of the Grand Mosque in its 4,000-year history, and where Fosrock's Proofex product was selected to ensure an extremely durable waterproofing system throughout the build. Also, as part of the construction of this 890 meter high Burj Khalifa in Dubai, the world's largest tower, Fosrock provided the concrete admixtures and surfactant products to balance the concrete flow and setting requirements while pumping the, the, the mixtures to over heights of 600 meters. Closer to home, Fosrock was also integral to the building of Arsenal Football Club's Emirates Stadium and Manchester City's 80-acre training complex. Today, Fosrock has around 2,500 employees and an approximate annual turnover in excess of $500 million, with manufacturing operations in 20 countries while trading in over 70 others, thus making significant contributions to the global economy through sales and employment opportunities. On a more personal note, 
Jim has been married to Fitri for 25 years, and we are delighted that Fitri has been able to join us today, and we warmly welcome you to Strathclyde. Fitri also has a notable academic background with a degree in economics and, and marketing, and also has been a director of the GMH group since its inception in 2002. Jim and Fitri have a family of two daughters, with Jim having a further two daughters from his previous marriage. Jim and Fitri are extremely proud of the four young women, Jasmine, Catriona, Karis, and Lauren, who are all excelling in their own chosen fields of education and business. Another area of the Hay family life that seems like a pastime, but is very much a serious business venture for Jim and Fitri, relates to thoroughbred racehorses. For Jim, the horse racing passion started at a very young age and was linked directly to his talent in mental arithmetic. Jim's grandmother, while watching horse racing with, with him over the weekends, would sharpen Jim's mental math skills as he was encouraged to cal calculate the winnings from their imaginary bets. As well as, importantly, Jim also being employed as a human calculator to work out the actual winnings of family members to ensure the proper level of payout at the local bookies. Now, Jim and Fitri have combined their passion for horse racing with business, with the family owning over 50 thoroughbreds, training and racing in countries across the world. Many of these family horses have extremely successful racing careers. For example, the Hayes Thoroughbred Fame and Glory had 12 major wins, including the Ascot Gold Cup in 2011. And just last month, Highland Chief brought in their most recent win at the Grade 1 Man of War Stakes in New York. In addition to that communicated to this stage, through the GMH group and personally, Jim and Fitri drive a significant philanthropic portfolio. Indeed, the support for the University of Strathclyde has made a transformational impact on the university's teaching, research, and educational activities. This has included the establishment of the Hay Laboratories within the Strathclyde Institute of Pharmacy and Biomedical Sciences as a flagship research hub targeting, targeting the treatment of infectious diseases. Additionally, the endowed, endowed Dr. James and Mrs. Fitri Hair Chair in Child Health has been established within the Department of Biomedical Engineering. Beyond Strathclyde, Forsrock is a prime sponsor of the Scottish Rugby Academy for Boys and Girls. Jim is a passionate advocate of fostering and actively facilitating interactions between his business and social communities, with the Rugby Academy specifically positioned in areas of social deprivation within Scottish cities and towns, and with such values and approaches entirely aligned with Strathclyde's own widening access missions and goals. Remaining in the UK, the SAS Clock Tower charity is another key priority where Jim's activities deliver extensive levels of support to serving soldiers and their families. In a more global sense, the Hayes are major supporters of various projects to help house and educate street children in Indonesia, particularly via the Humanisti Foundation, an organisation that now supports over 200 underprivileged children in Jakarta. And moving to close this oration, it's worth noting that Jim describes himself simply as a Glasgow-born and bred Scot. From this address, and has witnessed over many years, I would offer that he's quite a remarkable Glasgow-born and bred Scot. Jim Hay is a world-leading businessman, as recognised through a number of notable previous accolades, and who has shown outstanding innovation and impact in both the scientific industry and through his wider business endeavours. He has also been a key ambassador for promoting the successes of the University of Strathclyde across a global platform, with his dynamic and driven business and philanthropic activities having helped transform lives locally, nationally and globally, while delivering economic, social and cultural impact. It is with great pleasure, therefore, Principal and Vice-Chancellor, that with the authority of Senate, I ask you to confer upon James Muir Hay the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. I create you Doctor of Science Honoris Causa, Jim. Uh, your personal and professional career is absolutely outstanding. We're enormously proud of you, and this gives us an opportunity to where you, welcome you back appropriately to the University of Strathclyde. Many congratulations. <laughs> Very proud of you.
guess, is to say, follow that, yeah? <clears throat> principal and Vice Chancellor, Associate Principal and Executive Dean, Deputy Associate Principal, distinguished guests, fellow graduates. As graduates today marks the attainment of her chosen degrees, following years of hard work supported by the University of Strathclyde. So a huge thanks to everyone involved in the Strathclyde team, from the chancellors, the principals, deans, professors, lecturers, all the backroom staff, and to the bar teams in the union. <laughs> Your dedication and hard work has delivered. So fellow graduates, I stand here almost 50 years to the day from where you're sitting. <clears throat> I see some of you behind me are probably thinking, God, he is ancient. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me tell you, or help you to understand that time is truly relative. Time, time bends. It goes past in a flash. Punctuated, though, by many challenges, many opportunities. When I look back, I was hugely elated to pass the 11 plus. <laughs> Five of us who passed were cheered by our 28 classmates. A strange experience because that was only reserved for the football team. <laughs> I had even more elation when I gained enough hires and was accepted to come to the University of Strathclyde. That was surpassed when I sat 50 years ago and graduated BSc. But then beyond that, the climax is when I became PhD and I could then put doctor in front of my name. <clears throat> However, shortly after I left Strathclyde and that's when the fun really started. <clears throat> Believe me, the challenges just keep coming. However, like me, Strathclyde has you very well prepared for whatever career you follow and whatever life will throw at you. Now, as Professor Kerr mentioned, <clears throat> I have followed what I call the Strathclyde process, which I think is very apt for the business graduates. <clears throat> Professor Kerr alluded to some of the key bits. In this process, I've used it to guide everything in my commercial and business life. So you set very clear objectives, collect and analyze data, but eyes wide open, make sure the data is reliable and it's not full of errors, mistakes and risks. The devil will be in the detail. Draw conclusions and create an action plan. Now the key is in the name action plan. Unlike the current government, you then do it. That is Strathclyde. <clears throat> now, during the pandemic, <clears throat> we all kept hearing and being told, follow the science, follow the science, follow the science, like some religious mantra. Well, under my great PhD mentor, the late Dr. Ivor Bengoff, I learned, question the science, question the science, question the science. So Strathclyde has remained with me in many, many ways for all of the past 50 years. Now, <clears throat> when Professor Kerr was compiling his oration, he asked me, did I have any particular memories of my time at Strathclyde? Now, I could have thought of the folk night with Billy Connolly and the Humblebubs. And I need to be careful as my wife's sitting here. I could also have mentioned the disco is with the nursing staff from the Rotten Row Maternity Hospital. <laughs> but no, <clears throat> popped, popped into my mind was ferrocene. Mm. The ferrocene is a fascinating organometallic compound that had been synthesized by our head of organic chemistry, the late Professor Peter Posson. This was a huge breakthrough in the whole area of organic chemistry. <clears throat> now the prof, he liked to set as many, many tests in the laboratory, and that included 
make ferrocene. So I succeeded, and I was desperate to show this great man that I had, I had done this. So I had five, five grams of the substance on a small filter paper. Now, the prof was very short-sighted, so I had to hold it up close for him to look, at which point he sneezed <laughs> and blew my efforts all across the lab. Now, <clears throat> I can't do his German accent very well, but if you can imagine, he looked at me and barked, hey, you did it once, do it again. I can still hear him chuckling as he wandered off down the corridor, yeah? So, humor, humor is another essential element of the whole Strathclyde experience. It courses through <coughs> the veins of Glasgow. So when I say to you, I've, I've taken many, many things from Strathclyde, not just the content of the degree, but a whole way of life. <coughs> so, here you are. Enjoy today. Celebrate with your friends and families. You've achieved a fantastic amount especially during all the troubles of COVID. I believe you are very well equipped to face whatever life will bring you. You have all your degrees that confer, plus the values that Strathclyde has imparted. You now have a key to a door that opens out into many, many opportunities. So I wish you good health and Godspeed. Thank you. If I can now ask Professor Susan Howick, Vice Dean of Strathclyde Business School, to present our graduates. Executive Dean, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Master in International Business with a Modern Language, Olivia Mary Addy. <laughs> Chloe Arbuckle. <laughs> Eve Margaret Blakey. Ainsley Louise Bonner. <laughs> Jamie Davidson Brown. <laughs> Jennifer Rachel Brownlee. <laughs> Lindsay Cairns. Erin Louise Callaghan. Andrew Cleary. Ailey Corrigan. Emma Catherine Devine. Selma Dillon. <laughs> Max Drybera. <laughs> Nathan Epimolu. <laughs> Lauren Helen Flynn. Marta Maria Fonseca. <laughs> Ada 
Ely Margaret Hudson. Owen Jenkins Garcia. <laughs> Cynthia Lee. <laughs> Maria Laura Manka. <laughs> Rachel Diane McGovern. Rebecca McPeak. <laughs> Inna Rose Milne. <laughs> Finley William McIntosh Naylor. <laughs> Rachel Angel Neal. Marta Nowak. <laughs> Hannah Christina Riley. <laughs> Leone Rice. <laughs> Cameron John Laird Ross. Rebecca Scott. <laughs> Lynn Alexandra Smelly. <laughs> Emma Sweeney. <laughs> Catherine Melrose Thompson. Kelly Wong. <laughs> Helena Zacchino. <laughs> For the degree of Master in International Business with Modern Languages, Jonathan Michael Devine. Alana Palmer. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Business Enterprise, Connor Barr. <laughs> Esme Pierce. Sarah Coyle. <laughs> Jayawi Shao. <laughs> Jousin Sun. <laughs> Vittorio Veza. In Business Enterprise and Business Analysis and Technology, Ted Hunter. In Business Enterprise and Business Law, Simon Fraser. In Business Enterprise and Economics, Yong Shou Feng. In Business Enterprise and Finance, Drew Vikram Singh. In Business Enterprise and Management, Andrew John Cullen. Ross McCorkendale. In Business Enterprise and Marketing, 
Julia Francesca Combrey. In Accounting and Finance, Hamid Abdullah Kamidesh bin Aloba Almeri. In Business Administration, Eko Francis Ugbeb. In Business Analysis and Technology and Marketing, Misbah Javid. In Finance and Business Law, Kellen Lee. In Hospitality and Tourism Management and Marketing, Ju Chi Wu. In Human Resource Management and Marketing, Long Yu Zhang. In International Business, Jonathan Christopher Maguire. In International Business with a Modern Language, James Anthony Murray. Caitlin Finn. In International Business with Business Analysis and Technology, Danielle Dominique Yvette Arojo. Ellie Craig McCourt. <laughs> Faiza Hassan. <laughs> Daniel Andrew Gary Kane. <laughs> Jamilia Karina. Katrina Gueladis Longstaff. <laughs> Elaine Joanne Tassi. <laughs> Hilal Ahmed Abdallah. In International Business with Business Enterprise, William Jack Best. <laughs> Ailey Cannon. <laughs> Maria Hillier. Sasha Naki. Aaron Kesh Trehan. Adam Ian Goldie. Eva Sinclair Kerr. In International Business with Economics, Luke Lynch. In International Business with Finance, Matthew Chandler. Kirsty Coburn. Anna Cooper. <laughs> Louise Marion Jones. <laughs> H. 
Ke Yi Lavinia Lam. Eileen McGill. Charles Edward Young. Regan McBeath. Campbell David Warnock. In international business with hospitality and tourism management, Elise Andrew. Alexandra Elizabeth Burney. Mirren Ann Jennings. Robin Kelly. Karen McDonald. Ruby McFarlane. Craig McPhee. Holly Nairn. Hannah Newlands. In international business with human resource management, Olivia Bryce. Andrew George Mitchell. Anna Neal. Sophie Peterson. Neve Sarah Doyle. Anna Alice Mitchinson. Rachel Elise Morrison. Lauren Reed. In international business with management, Gillian Bain. Alexander David Beat. Zoe Margaret Cameron. Christopher Gemmel. Jack Hands. Melissa Jenny Huber. Roisin McGuire. Hannah Kirsten Sinclair. Emma Roberta Ballantyne. Alexander James Blair. Sarah Catherine Kelly. Beth Kennedy. Stella Miller.
Ross Nicholson. Logan Alex Richardson. In international business with marketing, Cara Casey. Matthew Darcy. Christian Thomas Joseph Frommel. Emma McKenzie. Katie Jane McKenzie. Georgia Nielsen. Callum Aird. Catherine Louise Callaghan. Erin May Cant. Thomas James Clafferty. Alice Craven. Nicola Elliott. Yvonne Grant. Natalia Grazuska. Connie Huang. Annabelle Hudson. Lewis William McDonald. Catherine Mary McCartney. Tony McDonald. Lindsay Jane McLean. Nicole Ramage. Lauren Nicole Saxby. Tink Wong. Lewis Wood. Eleanor Garnham. In international business with modern languages, Peggy Sky Milderton Savage. In business management, Pamela Peacock. For the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration, Asma Huez. Evangelia Iakovu. Alana Magella McDade. Pai Thian Kant. Christian Oliver Wern.
Alexandra Teodora Georgescu. <laughs> Ning Sing Ji. <laughs> Navilla Okamoto. <laughs> Rushni Sasabalan. Sultan Suhail Musa. <laughs> Yu Sun. <laughs> Andrew Chung Tam. <laughs> si Kong Ma. Meling Su <laughs> Abhinav Aditya Kolachala Venkata Sai <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Business Enterprise and Business Analysis and Technology, Aaron James Lamont. In International Business with Finance, Jose Matthew. Let me warmly welcome you once again to this special ceremony and a memorable day, a day that marks the culmination of many years of demanding work and dedication for our new graduates. So I begin my address by congratulating our graduates of 2022 on your collective achievements and success with a round of applause from us all. Well done. <laughs> Now, as I said at the beginning of the ceremony, the, the last few years have been particularly challenging, yet you have shown remarkable resilience, adaptability and determination to arrive at this day. I know today will undoubtedly be a proud moment for those graduating in front of your family, your friends and supporters, and I am sure that you're incredibly grateful for their support. I now want to give you, our graduates, the opportunity to show your appreciation and gratitude to your family, friends and supporters who are here today and those who can't be here with a very appreciative round of applause. Thank you. All of you graduating today have been helped by our excellent staff who have worked hard to provide you with a first class education and outstanding student experience. Your success is their reward. So class of 2022, please join me in showing your appreciation to our academics and professional services staff at Strathclyde. Thank you.
In a short while, you will be invited to join an academic procession when we leave the hall. The procession is a symbol that you're no longer students, but now full members of the academic community at Strathclyde, and one that I've said before numbers over 191,000 people across the world. Of all the key figures who have made this university what it is, Professor John Anderson was the one who made it possible back in 1796 when Strathclyde was founded during the Scottish Enlightenment for the benefit of all humankind as a place of useful learning. Anderson believed in fostering knowledge for the greater good, what we call widening access today. And Strathclyde is at the forefront of widening access to higher education, welcoming those with the ability to learn regardless of their personal circumstances. We have already met the Scottish Government's 2030 target of taking 20% of our new students from the country's 20% most challenged areas. And we've achieved this while having some of the highest entrance requirements in the whole of the UK. Our motto of being a place of useful learning continues to apply today as we seek to gain new knowledge and understanding that we can use to resolve the challenges of our times. We're a research intensive university whose vision is to make a positive difference in the lives of our students, society and the world. Through our groundbreaking research, we're helping to change society and the economy for the better. In the recently published results of the Research Excellence Framework in 2021, and that's the UK government's system for assessing the quality of research in UK higher education institutions, almost 90% of Strathclyde's research was assessed as world leading or internationally excellent. Strathclyde also had the second highest impact quality profile in Scotland, demonstrating the effect our research has on everyday lives in the real world. Our scientists and researchers are leading the development of innovative technologies that will facilitate the transition from fossil fuels to clean, sustainable energy sources, such as wind, solar, and hydrogen, that will power our future world and tackle climate change. We're developing new drugs using digital manufacturing processes that will provide cheaper, more effective treatments in the fight against cancer, kidney diseases, and inflammatory diseases while helping our health services evolve to face the challenges of health and social care in the changing demographics of the 21st century. And through our focus in entrepreneurial education, and we call this Strathclyde Inspire, we're helping students and staff create new businesses with sustainability in mind, creating jobs and supporting economic growth. And I know that a lot of you being in the business school, you're thinking of setting up your own businesses. Please reach out to us. Speak to our staff, and if you've got good ideas, we will explore them and potentially help you set these businesses up. We're really leading the revitalization of this part of the city through the Glasgow City Innovation District, which is bringing large and small companies here on this campus to work together with the university to create new ideas, technologies, and solutions to a range of problems. And we're working to inform public policy and national economic strategy, education, productivity, and workplace strategies through our various research institutes. And most notably, I want to mention a Fraser of Allen, Allender Institute in the Department of Economics and the Scottish Centre for Employment Research in our Department of Work, Employment and Organisation. Our globally minded staff and students are working on sustainable development and addressing inequalities in places such as India, Malawi and the Gambia to establish clean water, renewable power supplies and healthcare facilities. And our students are also working in and around Glasgow, helping school pupils and social organisations address the challenges that they are facing. And I know that some of the students here have been doing that during your degree at Strathclyde. We have research teams in the business school working across all the key university research clusters, including health tech, fintech, 5G, and industrial informatics. Your business school is unlike other business schools in the UK. It is a business school fully integrated into the university's other faculties of science, engineering, and humanities and social sciences. It is a multidisciplinary business school and one that is proud to be part of a socially progressive leading international technological university. 
And you, as Strathclyde Business School graduates, have the requisite knowledge, skills and experience to work in all sectors for the good of society and the economy. In the near future, the university will be building a second innovation centre named in honour of one of our most successful business school alumni, Dr Charles Huang. And if anyone has taken a lateral flow test in the last two years, well, Charles was the business that actually developed these for the first time and supplied these to the British government. Charles had an MBA from Strathclyde. He had a PhD from Strathclyde and he was based in our marketing department. And last year, Charles donated 50 million pounds to the university, our largest ever endowment in recognition of the university's role in his success. And I just want to tell a little story about that gift that we were out just when Charles was here in November. Uh, we were at dinner um, and the principal was there and, and I was there and we asked Charles, why do you really want to invest that 50 million pounds at Strathclyde? What made it so special? And he said that the one thing that really stood out to him was that after he graduated, he went to Hong Kong and he started his career like all of you will start your career. But he always felt that he could come back to Strathclyde. He always felt that he could go to his supervisor, go to the staff in the department and ask for advice, ask for help. And that is the Strathclyde ethos. And please, we want you to never forget us when you're out and you're in your own career. You never hesitate to get in contact with the university and we will put you in uh, contact with people who can help you with your career. Now our graduates will know that we are continually working to enhance the student experience. The university is investing heavily in our campus. We spent over a billion pounds in the last 12 years on our campus. And that is evidenced by our new Strathclyde Sport Building and the Learning and Teaching Building. We're also investing in health and well-being services, always putting our students at the heart of everything we do. And our progress and efforts in these areas have been greatly recognized in recent years with a host of awards. We became the only university to win the Times Higher Education UK University of the Year twice, first in 2012 and then in 2019. We've been named the Business School of the Year, the Workplace of the Year, and Research Project of the Year in recent times. We've been awarded the Queen's Anniversary Prize three times, most recently in this year, and that is one of the UK establishment's most prestigious awards for higher education. And it's not just our institution that's been recognised. Our Principal and Vice-Chancellor, Professor Sir Jim Macdonald, is the President of the Royal Academy of Engineering, the UK's National Academy for Engineering Excellence and Technology Innovation. But enough about the university. Today is your day and the beginning of a new chapter in your lives where you take the knowledge and skills acquired during your time here to pursue and realize your own aspirations. As you forge your new careers, the university's values of being ambitious, bold, innovative, collaborative, and people-oriented will stand you in good stead. The world looks like a very challenging place at the moment. But as graduates of this university, you have a vital role to play. As Strathclyde graduates, we ask you to draw on your skills, knowledge, experience, and that alumni network, as well as the staff here, to build a brighter future for all of us. You are our future, and you have that responsibility. And in doing so, we hope you will demonstrate Strathclyde's socially progressive values and ethos of tolerance, pluralism, and a desire to make a, a positive difference. Champion knowledge, address injustice, and question inappropriate behaviors wherever you may find them. The Strathclyde degree that you now hold is your passport to success as you rise to meet the challenges ahead. The quality of research and education at Strathclyde is why you are so highly sought after by employers. And it's through you, our graduates, that we make our biggest impact in the world. So it is with immense pride that we see you graduate today. And though you may be leaving us, we want you to stay in touch. Be like Dr. Charles Wang. Do not hesitate to contact us at the different stages of your career and never ever forget your university. 
The time has now come for you to celebrate with your loved ones. So on behalf of the University of Strathclyde, congratulations to every one of you. Thank you. So the weather has kept up, fortunately, and we now ask you that the academics will now form the procession, our graduates will follow directly behind, and then we ask the family and friends to follow thereafter. So if the family and friends could please remain seated while we uh, move our uh, procession along to the Learning and Teaching Building, uh, which will have some beverages and some food there. So, please be upstanding, and I now declare today's congregation for the conferment of degrees closed. Thank you.